Changing our habits can be so hard. You try for a week, you eat better, maybe get more exercise, you read instead of watch, but soon enough, you revert back into old patterns. And this happens over and over again. So how can we actually make a difference in our lives if it feels so impossible? I read this book called Atomic Habits and James Clear mentions that if you want to make a habit stick, you have to try to make it pleasurable. Give yourself a reward, make it feel good, make it so easy that it almost becomes second nature, almost like brushing your teeth. You don't even think about it now, do you? You simply go brush. It's just something you do every day on autopilot. It's not something that feels like a lot of effort to put in. When we want to change our life, or we want to change something in our homes, maybe it feels too cluttered, we always feel like we have to make this huge change, take this massive action in order to actually make a difference. But the truth is, if you make small progress every single day for a long period of time, it's going to have a compound effect. The results will surprise you. If you start doing small things in your home or in your life and try to make it 1% better every single day, you will be surprised at what a difference it can make in one year, for example. And incorporating one small habit at a time can make a really big difference in bettering our lives. So pick a small habit and do it over and over again, even if not perfectly, until it becomes almost like second nature. Like you just cleaned your entire kitchen and you didn't even realize. What? When did I clean this? Today I'm going to take you through 10 one minute habits or micro habits that require very little effort but give you big results in the long term. And even if it might not seem like it, they are pretty life changing. One minute habit number one, make your bed. I know you're gonna roll your eyes at me for this one, but making your bed can truly make a statement to yourself, not to anybody else. It can make you feel a lot more productive, it can make you feel like you're getting something accomplished for the day, even if it's nothing major. It just puts a spring in your step, and whenever I do make my bed, which is pretty much every morning, I feel a lot better and what is key here for me is to actually create a clutter-free bedroom and a very simplified bedroom so that when i go to make my bed it truly is a one minute task so it doesn't take me ages to fluff up pillows or to you know arrange perfectly all the layers on my bed i keep it very simple we've got a duvet some decor pillows and that's it it honestly does not take longer than a minute and for me the rest of the day whenever i go into the bedroom i have this feeling of accomplishment this feeling of calm because when i walk into my bedroom if it's a pile of you know padding and pillows thrown on the floor it just gives me this feeling of stress and just in the back of my mind i have that oh i should probably tidy that up you know and of course it's nothing major but it gives you just this little negative twinge that can add up if you've got a lot of these areas in your home so whenever i walk into my bedroom if the bed is made it just makes me feel calm it makes me feel like you know i'm done in there i don't need to do anything i don't need to constantly add things in the back of my mind on my mental to-do list it's just a lot more peaceful in my day habit number two clean while you cook i started doing this a while ago and it makes such a difference because before i would make dinner let's say and when i was finished there would be pans plates bread to put away ingredients to put away basically the whole kitchen counter would be covered in things once you're finished with your dinner and you want to maybe relax or go play with your kids or do something you enjoy you don't want to have a kitchen that just exploded that makes you feel overwhelmed because now you have to tidy before you can go enjoy something else and this is usually at the end of the day when we're already very tired anyway so what this looks like when i'm cooking dinner if i'm finished with a cutting board i will quickly rinse it if i'm finished with this knife i will put it in the dishwasher if i'm finished with the cooking oil i will put it back in the cupboard and it's something that takes such little effort and once you start this habit and you do it over and over again it's going to become so easy for you you don't even think about it it's just something you do you finish with the oil you just pop it back and then when you're finished cooking dinner yes there might be a couple of plates to clean up but it's not a massive explosion in your kitchen and that makes a huge difference for me. And while we're in the kitchen, habit number three is to clean your countertops after each meal. And I know this might sound a bit restricting and of course, maybe it's not possible every single time, 
but this is something I try to be intentional about and actually do after most or each meal. I will just go around, put plates away, throw anything that needs to be thrown in the rubbish and maybe give it a quick wipe. And because I have simplified my kitchen and I don't have a lot of things out on the countertops, it's actually a really quick job. It usually does not take more than a minute or a few minutes, depending on obviously the, the meal that we just had. And it's just like walking into your bedroom and your bed is all made. Well, when you walk into your kitchen and the countertops are clear or mostly clear, it just gives you a good feel. It feels like, oh, well, I'm actually pretty much done in here. It's not a big deal. My kitchen is pretty tidy. I don't need to stress about it. If somebody rings me right now and says, hey, can I pop over in 15 minutes? I'm not gonna feel frantically stressed. It's these little things that we do throughout the day that can have a massive impact on our stress and anxiety level. Micro habit number four, don't put it down, put it away. I can't remember exactly where I read this, but it is honestly life-changing. It can be so easy for us to just drop things around the house, right? Just drop it on the dining table, drop it on the coffee table, drop it on the floor, drop it on the kitchen counters. But most of the time, if we really think about it, putting that item away instead of just dropping it in a random spot actually doesn't take longer than a minute, if that. And getting in the habit of doing this means there's gonna be less things just floating around your surfaces, on your floors, which means there's gonna be less of a massive tidy for you to do because you've been doing these little things throughout the day and the mess is just not going to accumulate to a level that feels overwhelming. Number five, declutter one item. It does not take longer than a minute, especially if you've got an outbox. Whenever I notice an item around my home, like, oh, here's a hat that they've actually outgrown or they don't really wear anymore. I just take it and pop it in the outbox. If I notice a toy they haven't been playing with and I know they're not gonna miss, I can maybe ask my older son if he still needs it. If not, I just pop it in the outbox. And just noticing things like this throughout your home can make a really big difference without having to do a massive declutter every weekend. Micro habit number six, trash mail straight away. I know we get so much junk mail. You've got all of these advertisements and magazines that you never asked for or maybe you do get mail that you need but you don't have to keep it maybe it's just a reminder letter from your GP I try to sort junk mail and just mail in general as soon as it comes through the door if it's something that I need to address soon I will put it in our letter folder but if it's something like junk mail it goes straight in the recycling i do not keep those anymore i don't keep them in my letter holder because if i don't have a use for it there's no point in keeping that and cluttering up my entryway or my surfaces it's one of those things i do straight away and it makes a big difference because whenever i walk past that hallway i don't see a huge pile of paperwork that i need to tackle it's just a few letters here and there that maybe i need to address but it's nothing major and it really helps with your stress levels even if sometimes you don't realize it what an effect it can have on you and speaking of the entryway put things in a drop zone have a drop zone next to your door somewhere where you can put things that you come in with right some keys purse or wallet sunglasses anything like that have a little basket or a little drop zone where people can just pop them in there. It does not take longer than a minute to do this. And that way, when you leave the house, you always know where your keys are, where your purse is. You don't have to go finding them. And you're avoiding the stress of, you know, oh, you're gonna be late now because you can't find your wallet. It's such a simple thing that can make a big difference. The next little habit that I do is to tackle the incoming tornado as soon as possible. And what I mean by this is, you know, when you come in and your kids throw on the floor their coat, shoes, mittens, hat, artwork that they brought from school. It's just something that piles on in your entryway and whenever you walk past it, it stresses you out, you stumble on things. This is something I try to tackle straight away. My older son sometimes will put things away. He doesn't do it every single time, but I do think he's getting better and better at it as he grows older. But I have little areas where all of these things go, so they do have a home, right? The shoes have a little home next to the door. He has a little pack for his coat that's very accessible eye level for him. He knows where all of his hats and mittens go. 
So yes, he might not do it every single time, but having a place for all of these items is going to make a big difference. The next habit is something I've been doing for quite a while now, and that is to tidy toys as you play. As you're sitting on the floor with your kids, you can also do a bit of tidying in the meantime. This is something I like to do. Obviously not to disrupt their game, like if they're playing with a toy, I'm not gonna take it from their hand and tidy it up, obviously. I'm not that deranged. I think <laughs> but you know how they pour a basket of toys out and maybe they play with something else now then I can start tidying up that basket and put it back if they're finished with the wooden blocks I can ask them you know can I tidy this are you finished with this and I can simply do that as I'm sitting on the floor with them as they're playing alongside me this is something that's such a small thing you can do and it's not it's not something I sometimes consciously think about. I just grab toys and put them in a basket because I'm right there with them anyway. I might as well just do a few things here and there. And that means they also get more space to play with the toys they are actually enjoying at the moment. And it also means there's gonna be less of a massive tidy at the end of the day. Next habit is to remove notifications from your phone. Now, I don't mean the important ones that you really, really need to address straight away. Like I still get calls on my phone and I still get some messages. I have muted some of them, especially the school groups that I'm in. I do go and check those groups regularly just because I need to stay up to date, you know, with what's going on in my son's class. But I don't have the notifications coming in all the time because it can be super distracting. This is something I became aware of when I watched the Netflix show I think it was the social dilemma where they mention how many notifications you get and how easily it is for you to get pulled into your phone straight away and feeling like you constantly have to be on top of things and check things and just be present on your phone all the time when in reality there's very little that is you know super urgent or that really needs your attention straight away i do still keep calls because you know my son's school might call or the doctor or whatever it might be and messages from people as well but i don't keep instagram notifications on those are completely off on my phone i don't keep youtube notifications on none of the social media ones actually not even email ones because it can just be super distracting like i'm filming a video right now if i were to get notifications constantly on my phone i would be constantly pulling my attention to it even if it wasn't that important sometimes it catches your attention and then you go onto instagram and then you find yourself 30 minutes later you're still scrolling you don't even know why but you are there scrolling it's just because social media is very good at pulling our attention and keeping our attention there maybe i have no self-control but what i can do to control this is to simply remove the notifications and then when I want to or when I have the time, I can go on my phone and, you know, check what I missed. But it's never anything urgent, especially on social media. And this is something that can also help with being more present with our children and also being more productive throughout the day. So if you haven't tried it yet, give it a try for 30 days and see how it feels. I know it can feel a bit like maybe you're isolating yourself from the world, but I promise you're not. It's always there. Social media is always there to go back to when you actually have the time or you want to. Do you have any micro habits that you would like to implement in your life? And what do you think would actually make a difference to your life? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. I think having a clutter-free and tidy house is actually a lot easier once you implement some of these habits. I do hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys.